cutaways. Oh yeah, my swimsuit from 1970. That's basically it, isn't it? Yep. That's it. And we're going to say disco. Yeah, I'll, I'll we're announce start it. Start on that, and then yeah, go. and pan out. Does that work? No. Okay, here we go. Um, we're in line for disco, which is drawing in isolation for sanity in the time of COVID. So this goes out to every single human on earth who's having a hard time living with their own brain, which might be happening in pandemic proportions. So the beautiful thing about my uh, existence on this earth is that I bumped into William Robinson at art college who taught me all these fantastic tricks. And I've been drawing, uh, teaching in hospitals for cancer patients and in schools for 30 years now. And I'm going to give you all my tips for drawing at home to keep sane. And um, we're starting with the human eye because everyone's missing human faces and human interaction. So I'm going to do the human eye with you. And then I'm going to do the human face. And then I'm going to do a cut lemon on a plate just so we all feel kind of homely and a bit sort of cooking show. So here we go, disco. Drawing in isolation for sanity in the time of COVID. So what we do is we pick up the most important thing that Bill ever taught us is pick up the stick, um, pick up the charcoal like a stick or the drawing material like a stick. So the way you remember that is to go like a snapping bird, gah, 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 picks it up like that. And just think about it. Um, if you were an athlete, you would have the use of your wrist, your elbow and your shoulder now to draw, which was more connection to the brain more connection to the right side of the brain, not the left, the logical list side, the right subconscious spooky side. So I want you all to get on board with the creative process because you've got to be easy on yourself and kind. So we're going to start really, you have to make a mess and make mistakes to learn. So my beautiful friend Lisa has decided to model for me. And um, we're going to start out with just stuffing up the page, people. That's, that's how it all starts, a big fat mistake. And I'm thinking about the, uh, this is called contour drawing. So the great thing about this is it bypasses the memory cortex of the brain, which lives under the hypothalamus. So I'm not drawing my memory of an eye today. I am drawing Lisa's eye because I've never seen it before in life. So I'm starting with a contour drawing of the arch of the eye. Now, what we have to learn to do, and this is what Bill taught us, is to measure diagonally. So I'm at the corner of the eye. Most people have a ball in their eye. Now, I'm pretty sure all of humanity do, and a lot of animals. So you don't draw the ball. This is the trick. You do the negative space, which is the shapes around the eye. So here we have, um, on this side of Lisa's eye, I pick up the pencil like a stick and I make that mark. We've got a little crescent shape on that side and on this side it goes across and I almost make a little mark for myself where the end of the ball meets that end of the eye but what I'm really looking for is the shape of the white of the eye. Now for all you solo travellers who have to spend COVID stuck away in your flat by yourself, go to the mirror and don't think about makeup or how spectacular you look. Just basically grab the drawing tools and have a go at drawing your own eye. I guarantee you'll be there for an hour and not even, you don't have to be a narcissist. So here we go, we've got the two whites of the eye. Everyone's got a little black dot in their eye. For darker eyes, um, there's just layerings of the darks, which is really wonderful to explore. So we're going over here, coming up here, thanks for the mascara, she's done a gorgeous job and picking up that pencil like a stick, gluing my eye to the subject. This is the other trick that Bill taught us. We actually um, measure diagonally. So when I'm dr drawing the eye, the distance of the eyebrow above the lid becomes shallower. So here, with Lisa's soft blonde hair, this comes around this way, and we've got to the edge of the face here, so I'm gonna just chuck that line up there and then come down here. What I'm doing is measuring the side of the face. So gluing my eye to the edge of that line and I'm not naming it because if you name things like ear, face, eye, your brain takes over. And what I wanna do is get a communion between the hand and the eye that does not involve the brain. And it's called contour drawing. So if we were to give her a nose, which on a good day I'm prepared to do, so we're coming down here, say it might feature around about there. 
The distance in a portrait that is really important is the distances between things. So we're going to come down here and eventually like I'll get, and I also have to force myself to leave my eye on her and make that space bigger. So we might get down here for the darks, but I'm, I'm prepared to change all that. Let's go back up to the eye. So in Lisa's eye, there is a mid color in, in the eye itself. And also um, we have light shining in there. So I firmly believe that the eraser, not the rubber as in school, the eraser um, gets, um, is just as an important drawing tool as the charcoal or the pencil. So we're gonna cut in there and just remember that nobody ever got it right first time. Do you know how many times Leonardo da Vinci moaned on about making the perfect circle? Couldn't he just have been content with what he did do? Jeez Louise. Okay, so let's have a look. And what I'm gonna do is carve out those lights in um, Lisa's eye with the eraser. Also, what we have to remember is the eye is not flat. And although I'm in the process of turning 2D into 3D, um, the eye is actually, I'd like to describe it as a billiard ball with a sheet of puff pastry placed over it. In terms of volume, that's what we're talking about. So coming in here, I've got this cool stuff called white conti, which is kind of like a pastel, but it'll give me a really fresh kick in the lights of the eye. So I'm going to hold that down there. And also I'm going to use the white conti to give the eye a flavor like the whites of the eye are flavour, because they're hardly ever, the whites of the eye are hardly ever pure white. Everybody knows you've got that little, like, um, tear duct. It's not redundant, it's not like an earlobe, it's got a use. And um, we come in here. Now, with this softer colour, you can use something called a smudge stick, or you could use your finger. Either way, you can see that that gives me more vocabulary in terms of dark and light shades. So we're coming in there. And the great thing about drawing your own eye or maybe your child's eye or your husband's eye is that you can get to know them and get to know your tolerances. Your creative process will say, oh God, I think I'm totally lost. I think I should stop. But don't worry about that creative process because you only experience fear when you haven't done something. If you knew the process, you wouldn't experience fear. So the creative process is all about tolerating the fear. And I always tell people, it's like a little rabbit fence going up a mountain. It's there to show you where the edge is. And if you want to jump off, you can, but it's never going to stop you getting to the top of the mountain and enjoying the view. And here's the other incredible thing. You know how there's billions of people out there that are just going absolutely bonkers indoors. Well, this is a wonderful way to get to know yourself and what your tolerances are. So if we're coming here, do you notice that that eye lid is a slightly different tone? So see, I can roll the pastel. There's a million ways, just like the ABC um, and the alphabet and uh, people are involved in literature or sport. They have a whole bunch of stuff that they have to learn. Well, we have a vocabulary too and it's it's called light, dark, um, harmony, things like that. So you can see Lisa's nose comes around. You can also see the more that I draw, the bigger my drawing gets. That's only normal because our brains are fully engaged. If I measured here to the side of Lisa's face and then we're coming down here for her mouth, I've instantly discovered that I've made too big a gaps. Um, I mean, too small a head is, <laughs> depends how you look at it as with everything. So here we go. Um, the line in between someone's mouth is never symmetrical. And roll down for the lips. I'm sure the ladies who put on their makeup realise that you've got to, like, makeup artists realise that you must make that strike outwards to increase the volume of the lip. And in fact, in ancient Chinese theatre, they would put a small little red dot on the inside of the eye up here as well as white eyeliner inside. So if you stood at the back of the Chinese theatre, you would see the eye of the opera singer fully open. Or maybe she was doing kabuki, God knows. Okay, so here we go. This eye be darker. Um, any detail that you see, and remember that you're very unique. There's no one in the history of the universe 
who's ever lived on this earth that will ever see things the way that you see it. And that's incredible and that's valuable. So don't give yourself a hard time, just persist, just keep going. The longer you do it, the better it'll be. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'd be loving my er eraser to do a bit of work right now. Um, with Lisa's eye, let's really check out those tones. I don't think I've made my billiard ball with pastry situation is not showing enough volume here with the eye. So I'll roll that down a bit. And we're thinking of the anatomy of the eye. I've turned you into a very strange sort of Duran Duran cover here. Oh, just take out your chin. You feeling any pain? No. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to try and think broadly. So we're coming here and I'll take this down this way. We're going a bit closer to the face here. If the nose was here, perchance, Apparently, according to the books on proportion, we've got five eyes across the body, across the face, sorry. So in between the two eyes is room for another eye. So when we go right in here, this eye comes up in a totally different shape. And don't forget that a drawing is changeable. And that's another really important thing that William Robinson said. If a drawing is not changeable, it's not worth doing. So when we draw the nose, and we'll get onto this during the portrait, there's a whole um, if, a bunch of things to, to deal with, but if you get the position of the nostril, you'll be far and away. So the face is, is like sculpture. So you, you almost imagine making it in clay. So if we came down here, and I was looking at one thing we do look at is the negative space. So the blacks kind of come around here, around the edge of the face. And of course we can, the mouth is going to be a little bit wider out here. Anyway, we don't want to concentrate too much on the rest of the face, except to say that I don't want her to look freaky when we're trying to do the eye. So let's go back up here and see what else I can talk about with the eye. Um, everyone has a recess of the skull um, that the eye fits into. So if we just roll that charcoal through there, or if you want to use pencil, just think about the direction of the mark. And every single painting that we love and, cher and cherish um, usually involves light. Um, and I want you all to know that the light that everyone's missing out on is the purple lights. And that's what Bill Robinson um, really focuses on beautiful violets and things like that. And ultraviolet light's very good for us, but because of computers and screens, we only get yellow, magenta, cyan, black. So we're losing the ability to um, actually um, articulate those violet colours. And I can show you how to mix those colours, but because some of us are just beginning, I don't want to terrify you. I just want to start you with the basics. So. We also notice that Lisa has little lashes on the bottom, not unlike most humans. And there's this side could possibly be a little thinner. Um, and maybe if I started just describing part of the hair, that would help as well. Also, the more I draw around what I'm drawing, and this, I've worked for 17, 18 years at a hospital te uh, teaching art to patients going through cancer or palliative care. And sometimes if you can't move the problem, but you can move something beside the problem, then you've got a little bit more space and um, mental refuge. So I just would encourage everybody to go into the bathroom, have a look at their eye, have a go at just really focusing on your own, um, your own eye, what happens in that eye, Maybe find someone patient that you love. And the great thing about drawing is, what about this COVID distance? It just makes itself 1.5, 1.5, we're all over it. So think about the fact that the nose is sort of broader down here, broader across here. And then where do I want to, um, any time in a drawing where you're going, what do I do next? The thing that you should do is dark and light. So just, Keep going back to that dark and light. I said you had a, like a little crispy crescent over here of eye white and I've made it too large. So 
on this side, we're going to go up to that eyebrow. And I want you to know, I know that the face is out of proportion, but this is my 10 minute sketch devoted entirely to the eye. So just, just hang in there with me, comrades. We're nearly there. Um, we're also measuring diagonally. As you draw, everything changes. So just make sure that you change with it. Another really amazing thing that William Robinson taught me was that everything should be done loosely and then drawn together like a little string bag, like a crocheted bag. So if you say, oh, I'm so sketchy, I'm so full of holes, I'm like a crocheted bag, it's pretty good because you can still breathe, you know? So let the drawing breathe. Don't get really um, tight in one area. I haven't really dealt with that little pocket um, where the tear duct is, but if I keep looking, I can see that there's a little definition there and you can, like Conti and charcoal, extremely cheap. Um, for all those families out there trying to do COVID without any internet, um, this is something that might save you sanity. Back to the eye. So here we go. Um, ting, 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 ting. And the sparkling. So we're really hammering down those darks. Where are the darkest points? Of course, Lisa does not have um, sort of midnight eyeshadow on. So we're going up in there. But also let's, let's consider the volume under here um, for that part of the eye. And we're going across. Shiny, it's, it's, it's quite soft here. Um, where are those? We've got some beautiful lighting in here. Thanks to Justin, the prize winning filmmaker. And we've got these pieces of light. So really build that up with the whites. Coming in here softly. Is that exactly the right color for the eye? So you can, you can put that in. Um, the softness of the eyebrow. So just keep working on it and I think we're, it's lash time again. It's time for lashes. Out we go. The brow bar, this is what happens. I will see your soul, guaranteed. It's in both eyes. So here we go, all nice and soft there. Comes in there, goes out a little bit here. I'm thinking to myself, we are pretty close to dealing with that eye. How are we for time, Justin? We are winding it up. Hey, you want to join me and we'll do the face? That's, that's my lesson for um, the very first step on enjoying humans in COVID. Okay. Cool. There you go. Look at your eye. <laughs> it's a great eye. It's a great drawing. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I had to, I had to add a few chins.